Hi you guys. I missed you the last few days. I've been recovering from the horse show this past weekend, but boy, I wasn't gonna miss international, wait, not international, Women's History Month. I keep wanting to say International Women's Day, but that I keep because International Men's Day, November 19th. But anyway, it's, it's Women's History Month and I wanted to talk about it with you guys. All these things to say, but I was like, you know what? What is everyone else saying? What is the mainstream media actually saying? Are they listing all our inventions? Are they talking about all the ways we keep society going? Um, you know, like the grid and, you know, energy like on oil rigs? Or are they talking about how important we are as mothers? How, how there isn't really a home without a mother and a wife in it, about how important grandmothers are, how important it is to listen to their stories. Are they talking about that? Or is it just some kind of you go girl type of a thing? I'm thinking it's that. So I thought I'm going to Google it and see, but what is the, like, what have they written about this year? <laughs> I I want to hear the baloney. So I googled it and a Time Magazine article came up and it seemed like it would be super fun to go over with you guys. We will have a lot to say about it. And I, by the way, I know you guys are going to ask, I have finally sort of recovered from the horse show. It was really fun. Um, the girls did very well. The girl we've been talking about who may or may not have brain cancer, she still needs a test. I don't know when that is scheduled. I'm sure it's, you know, somewhere, you know, set up with the neurosurgeon, but I, you know, I, I couldn't help but think about that the whole time and think about how important this experience is. Not that she needs to win, not that, but just that these, these are the moments, you know, and that none of us knows when it's our time regardless of our age and I just I was soaking it in even more and I and I hoped that she was too and that her mom was I certainly couldn't forget about it so I don't know how they could but also I paid close attention well it's not hard there were a lot of dads and daughters at the show not as many as moms obviously I'm used to seeing moms and daughters, moms and daughters, but at this one, I really noticed the dads and daughters, and I thought, well, if he's divorced and he's struggling on, you know, time with his child and this and that, it's not a bad thing that he earns more money because he can afford the horse stuff, and he's with his daughter because he pays for it. And that occurred to me because of one of the writers on our team, her dad always brings her, and I think to myself, well, he's also the one that pays. But I'm so glad they have this. I know that it's gonna just be so meaningful. I remember all the times my dad was at the horse shows. I, I, I cannot forget those times. They, they were precious, and I, you know, I don't know if he knows how, how important those times were. But every time I saw a dad and a daughter, I just was like, oh, I'm going to tell my guys about it. I'm going to tell you guys about it. Oh, it was very good. Very good to see, to see that, uh, that bonding. I certainly look at it differently now that I've, you know, heard from you guys and understand a father's love differently. Because I used to understand it more from a daughter's point of view and you really can't. And I, I just knew that those dads were looking at their children just with this fierce, this fierce sacrificial love and, and they, and they appreciate their children. I just, anyway, it was really, really good. And I thought of you guys when I was there thinking about, about that. So anyway, let's, uh. Let's see what Time Magazine has to say about 
you know, women's history and how we should celebrate it and what's so important about it. The US and other countries, including the UK and Australia, are celebrating Women's History Month in March, featuring International Women's Day on March 8th. Well, heck, I just talked about International Men's Day. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the 8th. Oh, fantastic. Well, we haven't missed it. It's like, a, it's like Scrooge. Have I missed it? Have I missed it? No. Yay, we get to celebrate the very important day tomorrow. We'll have to see, I'll have to see what I can think up. That'll be fun for us. And educational, because it's a very serious channel. Talking about serious topics. What did I just read? Okay, this year, President Joe Biden said in his proclamation declaring Women's History Month that during this time, quote, we celebrate the courageous women who have helped our nation build a fairer, more just society. Well, um, that sounds really nice. Fairer and more just. It's communism. And yes, women are important for if you want communism, I, you don't get communism without feminism. I mean, that's why one of the first things the, Bolshev the Bolsheviks did was say, all right, church and state, you're separate because we want to eliminate God because God's order is what puts everything where it needs to be. And I think this is my think, this is my thinking. I think they wanted women, needed women to have way more of a say because women will generally be very pulled by their emotions and not want anyone to suffer. And it's not that men want people to suffer. It's just that men understand that suffering is inevitable. You want to minimize it, but at the end of the day, you can't sink. It's, I love the analogy of it's a lifeboat and say only eight people fit and say you know someone's drowning right here and they're trying to get they're putting their hands on the lifeboat trying to climb in but there's already eight people well the women are more likely to be like oh my gosh oh my gosh he's drowning and want to pull him or even if it's a child pull the child into the into the lifeboat pull the person into the lifeboat because it, they're they're moved by you know, the desperation and they don't want the person to die. However, if a ninth person gets into the lifeboat, then everybody dies. And women cannot, we have a problem seeing the big picture. The man is the one that is stronger than us in this way, sees the big picture, takes the oar, and does what needs to be done. That's my favorite analogy. And I think we're seeing it right now with all of the migrants that are flooding into the United States and what's going on in New York. They're calling the National Guard into the subway because too many people are being pushed onto the tracks and all kinds of other crime. I'm not saying the migrants are doing all of that, but I have seen videos of migrants beating up cops. I know it's a huge factor and women you know, they feel sorry for people. They feel sorry for criminals. They want to give them another chance. And it's da 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 da, da. And you just, that's just not the way you run a society. You just can't. But anyway, you can, you can use women that way. That's why we didn't have communism until we had feminism. It doesn't work. Wouldn't work if it was just men. Anyway, I mean, they do, you know, I've been thinking lately. Just one more thing about communism. Uh, remember that they use the term useful idiots because they need the useful idiots to usher in all the things that they want with the useful idiots not realizing it's not good for them. Well, I'm starting to think that, that we're the useful idiots. I'm starting to think that. Like, were they talking about women? They might have been talking about women. Not sure, but you tell me what you think. <laughs> anyway, we haven't even gone to the first one. 
International Women's Day was first recognized in Europe. Wait, did everybody say this? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Here are 10 surprising facts about Women's History Month. I got on, I was going on about communism and yeah, my, the I don't have a lot of friends, but the few I know, I'm like, oh, sorry, I just did a speech just then. Anyway, 10 surprising facts about Women's History Month. Uh, well, okay. International Women's Day was first recognized in Europe. <gasps> no, I'm just kidding. That's not surprising. Many reports trace the origins of a holiday honoring women to a New York City to New York City in 1909 to, to the commemoration of a garment workers strike. I think they're having AI write everything. Holiday honoring women to New York City in 1909. Okay. In 1910, German activist Clara Zetkin suggested to the International Conference of Working Women in Copenhagen the creation of an international holiday to honor women. Europeans recognized International Women's Day in 1911 although the U.S. did not follow suit. Okay. Well, okay, I guess we're talking about International Women's Day, not the month, not the Women's History Month. We're going back and forth because there's not enough history that they really want to talk about because they don't want to talk about what women are good at. If this is your first time with us, that's my heater. I live in an apartment. That's my heater. It's winter time. I'm not going to turn it off. We are. We are low rent here. I am not a big podcaster. I'm literally doing this off of my phone with one light on a TV TV dinner stand. So, you know, it's this is not the Daily Wire. Not yet. We're, we're working on it. Okay. International Women's Day. Day's date was chosen because of the Russian Revolution. Well, golly, you guys. Wasn't that just talking about the Bolsheviks? Isn't that funny? The Russian Revolution. Are they going to are they going to call it communism? The date of March eighth became significant in 1917 when women in the Russian capital of Petrograd protested and went on strike demanding food and the end of the empire. Oh, a week later, the Tsar abdicated. No, no. Zetkin reportedly suggested, oops, sorry, <clears throat> suggested in 1921 that March 8th become International Women's Day as a result. Hold on a second. Hold on. What? What? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. What was I just saying? That we're the useful idiots? Well, holy crap. Okay. Time Magazine, I'm sorry. Most people aren't gonna catch this because we, I don't know about you guys in Australia and other countries, I, I know I've, I've met some of you in the chat, kind of, I've read your comments. I think there's another guy from, I got a couple more guys from Australia and I think I, somebody from New Zealand has commented, somebody from Germany. Anyway, you guys are from everywhere. We in the United States, at least my generation, I'm Gen X, so born in 77, we were not taught about communism. We did not learn about the piles and piles of bodies from Joseph Stalin and all well, the entire entire communism from Russia and definitely not anything of Mao Zedong. We learned nothing of the Cultural Revolution in China. We knew nothing of that. And now I realize why, because then I would have grown up to definitely not trust China and not trust a leader who's running China now who looks up to Mao. He said it himself. And I'd certainly be concerned that the leader of Canada, Justin Trudeau, looks up to the leader of China who looks up to Mao. But if I didn't learn anything in school about Mao and communism in, a, in the way that's real, that there are piles and piles of bodies from it, well, gee, I guess I wouldn't be alarmed. All right, so March 8th, significant in 1917 women in Russian capital Petrograd protested went on strike those were communists 
the end of the empire, the empire was brought down by the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks later changed their name to the Communist Party. <sighs> the Tsar abdicated. Yeah, he was like, I'm getting the heck out of here. They were exiled. The whole, what is it, the Romanovs, right? His whole family exiled. This is a lie. Lie. And what did they do? They were like, oh, you women, you're so important. We care about you. You should talk more. You should make decisions. And they were like, yes, down with the patriarchy. I, you know what? Okay. Breathe, breathe. We're all going to be okay. Well, I mean, anyway. <laughs> Women's History Month started as a local week. These are the 10 most shocking. I don't know about you, but I can barely take any more. I'm so shocked. Women's History Month began as a local week-long celebration in Santa Rosa, California in 1978, according to the online National Women's History Museum. The Education Task Force of the Sonoma County Commission on the Status of Women planned the week and timed it with International Women's Day. Well, that's nice. 1978 in California. It, it's, you know, have you guys ever noticed this stuff is a little slower in the States? I know if you're here, it's like, oh my God, we're drowning in feminism and we're drowning in communism and you know, everything that happened in 2020, but the US is the freest place still. We are the last, I mean, it, as bad as it is, it's the best for now. Local advocates then formed the National Women's History Project. They had to come up with things that we'd done that make us sound like men. Now the National Women's History Alliance to share women's achievements. One of the group's members, Molly Murphy McGregor, participated in the Women's History Institute at, Lara, at Sarah Lawrence College in New York, where others were inspired to start their own week celebrations. According to the group's website, by 1986, 14 states had already declared March as Women's History Month. So she was all excited to participate and basically what she did was just like inspire other people to also celebrate. That's all they're doing is celebra celebrating themselves. So far, Women's History Month is celebrating women for no reason whatsoever. They have colors, I think. Didn't I see that when I was printing this out? Something about colors. So maybe they're decorating? I don't know what they're doing. It took years for Women's History Month to be federally recognized. <laughs> In 1980, the National Women's History Project led a coalition of women's groups successfully lobbied President Jimmy Carter to issue a proclamation recognizing National Women's History Week, National Geographic reported. It took until 1987 for Congress to pass a law designated, designating March as Women's History Month. Well, at least it took them a while. I mean, restore with my faith a little bit in this country, but you know, Ronald Reagan was busy in 1969 in California, making California the first state to recognize no-fault divorce. And we all know the late 60s was all about abortion becoming legal, birth control, and no-fault divorce. It was the trifecta. I'm surprised they didn't do the women's, mar the women's, you know, week or day or month or whatever they're doing. I'm surprised they didn't do it then. They probably were like, what are we gonna say it's about? <laughs> So far, I haven't heard anything that it's about. The U.S. president designates Women's History Month every year. Between 1988 and 1994, Congress passed resolutions requesting and authorizing the president to proclaim the special month. Since 1995, each president has issued an annual proclamation designated women, designating Women's History Month. What? So every year they have to like, is it like when he pardons the turkey? And he's like, he comes out and he's like, I designate this month as Women's History Month, or I designate, why? Why can't you just leave it? Because they gotta make a big fuss. 
it, it's typical. It's typical. No wonder I haven't known that much about it because I would have heard more about it in high school, I think. And it's been since 95 that they've been issuing an annual proclamation. It reminds me of like the groundhog <laughs> deciding if it's going to be, you know, early spring or whatever. <laughs> or it's the turkey that they pardon. pardon. It's about that silly. It's completely silly like that. And again, if in case anybody's, you know, keeping score, um, we still don't know what it's about. Former President Barack Obama's 2011 proclamation paid homage to the 100th, 100th anniversary of International Women's Day, saying the holiday is, oh, may, maybe we'll know what it's about, is a chance to pay tribute to ordinary women throughout the world and is rooted in women's centuries-old struggle to participate in society on an equal footing with men. This day reminds us that while enormous progress has been made, there is still work to be done before women achieve true parity. Is that equality? I swear AI writes these things, or is that what he said in his quote? Okay. Um, we're never going to get there because we are not as good as men. So we are never going to get there. We cannot compete with them. We, get, we are, we're not as smart in the same ways. We're not as able to work like they can. We are not men. You might as well have, you know, why don't you just have like a, like a dog and a kangaroo trying to be equal? It's not going to work. I was going to say a dog and a cat, but I swear I think men and women are way di more different. Like, uh, yeah. What else do women need? What rights? What rights do men have that women don't have? Women literally have more privileges and more rights than men do in the United States. It's just true. And yet, all they do is bitch. All they do is bitch, 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 bitch. That's all they do. And it's embarrassing because it's just a tantrum. <laughs> Centuries old struggle. It's sad. I'm, that's why they're so unhappy. Because they just, they're struggling to try to be, to compete with guys. And we're not supposed to. We're supposed to, we're supposed to you know, compliment one another and cooperate one, with one another, not compete. Man, I could go on about that for a while. So this is not a time for a TED Talk. There is an annual theme for Women's History Month. Well, of course there is, because it's just a silly kids party. There's gotta be a theme. This is the silliest thing ever. The National Women's History Alliance sets a theme for the month every year. This year's theme is women who advocate for equity, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Unless you're a woman who believes women do their best work at home. I would not be included. I just wouldn't. My hair is long. If my hair was like buzzed like this long and blue and I had tattoos all over, I'd probably be diverse enough. Obviously my skin color is too pale, but I would need to be some kind of sexual deviant to belong. So no, they're not inclusive. They're inclusive to other communists. I'll tell you what I really think. <laughs> okay, so the sad little kid's tantrum party theme is communism because that's what equity is equality of outcome women's history month is celebrated differently in canada well i'm so glad that was my question just kidding women's history month has spread around the world from the philippines to the uk in the latter mother's day is also celebrated in march while Women's History Month is generally commemorated in March, Canada holds their celebrations in October. Good to know. 
This is so silly. Like it's they still have it. They're just like their achievements, their accomplishments, struggle. It's it's a nothing. International Women's Day is an official holiday in some countries. Some countries mark International Women's Day as an official holiday. Sky History reported in China, many women can take a half day holiday. In Serbia and Albania, International Women's Day is also Mother's Day. Well, that makes a whole lot more sense because that's who we are. That's who we're supposed to be. That's what our bodies are literally built for. That's what we're supposed to do. And it's, it's not a bad thing. I Even part of my head, I have been propagandized and trained that when I say out loud, that is what we're supposed to do, I automatically know that people take that like it's oppressive and some kind of an insult and some kind of a limitation. Imagine where have we come in this world when you talk about giving birth to a new human who's never been here before is something to just be like, eh, well, you know, what else have you done? Really? It's, that's huge. And we have just, as a society, learned to, in one way, throw the whole role away and, and change what that is and say, well, after your kids are in school, they don't really need you at home anymore. That's baloney, because first of all, you should be homeschooling them. Second of all, when they get a little older, they still need their mom. They still need their mom. The house still needs the mom. The husband still needs the wife. The family still needs to be a unit. It's not like, well, I, he's in kindergarten. I'm off to be my a career now, and I'll just kind of juggle everything else and, and be you know stressed out and tired when the kids get home and you know, have to rush and do everything. And then my weekends have to be catching up on everything I couldn't do because I was at work. And so I'm going to do all that on the weekends instead of having a picnic with my family, playing with my kids, etc. So yes, we are mothers. We're supposed to be mothers. And that's a wonderful and amazing thing. Okay, well, thank goodness we know that in China they can take a day off. And Following the communism theme, is it any wonder that Women's International Women's Day is such a big deal in China that they can take half a day off? Well, you know what? In order to keep communism and have communism, you need the women on your side. Although they're so far gone, I, don't, I really don't think it would matter because they all think that way now. International Women's Day is celebrated with certain colors. Oh yeah, this is what I saw. I saw colors. <sighs> How silly. We have a theme and we have colors. We're learning about International Women's Day and month and week and whatever, and we haven't heard anything about women's, like the why we have, like really why. Purple, green, and white are the colors of International Women's Day according to the International Women's Day website. There's a website. The colors reportedly originated from suffragists didn't it used to be suffragettes? Was that sexist to say suffragettes instead of suffragists? Gosh, they, they always want to be men. In the Women's Social and Political Union, WSPU, in the UK in the early 1900s and were transported to the US. How little do you have that you have to talk about the colors of the thing? Okay, all right. Definitely didn't see this before. This didn't catch my eye. Actions this year will focus on abortion rights. The Women's March organization, which ran its first prominent march in 2017, a day after Donald Trump's inauguration, a pl is planning a rally in Washington, D.C. on March 26th when the Supreme Court will begin hearing oral arguments in a case about the abortion pill. So that's the only thing we've really read, it's like women need more rights and this year is gonna focus on abortion rights. Okay, the Supreme Court issued a temporary order in 2023 that put on hold a Texas federal judge's order 
to suspend the federal government's approval of the abortion pill. The March, he the March hearing will be the first major case concerning abortion since the Supreme Court's Dobbs versus Jackson's Jackson Women's Health or Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization ruling overturned Roe v. Wade in 2022. Sorry, I get a little heated with that topic, and I was just kind of trying to go too fast and stuttering. Uh, yeah, I'm not pro-life. I'm an abortion abolitionist. What that means is that I believe that abortion is murder and we already recognize murder as a crime and therefore it should be looked at as such and treated as such under the law. That is my belief. I believe that pro-lifers are way too wishy-washy talking about rape and incest and what the heck. It's a human life at conception. 96% of biologists agree that it's a human life at conception. Now, the pro-choicers will say, you know, it's, it's whether you assign value to that life or not, but we do know that it is human. It's not a squid. It's not a, it's not a horse. It's not a possum. It's a human, and it's, it's alive at the point of conception. It's also a brand new being with its own genetic code that has the map of everything that child Will develop into it is a zygote followed by you know embryo fetus etc those are developmental stages as is a newborn toddler you know child teenager etc those are that's just my opinion and you certainly don't have to agree to be here but that is why i get uh fired up and it bothers me that one of the biggest things that women want to do with all their rights is kill their babies uh, for whatever reason. This reason, that reason. There are 36 uh, couples for every newborn child that gets put up for adoption. So there's plenty of families if you're 14 and you made a mistake. So the fact that, is it any wonder that they downplay motherhood so much Unless the woman needs it to virtue signal, like, I'm a single mother, blah, blah, blah. I'm strong and independent, whatever. But if they, they really downplay motherhood and say, you should focus on your career, you should go to college, la, la, la. You know, you're not just an incubator, etc. Just to even, I've even heard the term crotch goblins to refer to a person's, a woman's, children and supposedly children she loves but the 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 disdain for motherhood the fact that we look at it like it's oppression like it's like oh like there's so many more important things no there isn't and not you have that on one hand and on the other hand you have it's your right to end that pregnancy end that pregnancy kill that baby that's what it is so that's what women are doing with all their rights. And uh, it's pretty disgusting the way they're treating you guys, the way they're treating each other, and definitely the way they're treating their offspring. There was a point in time where I was like, well, women only love their kids. Mm, no, they love themselves. Unless there's, for some reason, they've managed to stay in the natural order of things natural order being that order that God created, man, woman, child. It is an order of hierarchy. It doesn't mean that the top is oppressive. It just means that the order of, that's how we're organized to be the most functional we can be, which is good for everybody. So happy international, happy Women's History Month. I guess tomorrow will be International Women's Day. I will try not to have it take such a dark turn. And that's what happens when you kind of cold react to things. You just never know. And uh, this, these things do get me quite fired up. Quite, quite fired up. So yeah, I think that the women are the useful idiots. And I mean, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I've been swayed. I voted for Barack Obama twice. I did. I did. Like, where was my brain? I have no idea. No idea. 
feelings, feelings. Are we ready to change? Change what? I don't know. Sounded so good. Man, I was dumb. Now I don't think voting's real at all, but you know, we change. You live and you learn. And I'm a little out there for a lot of people. That's okay. That's okay. Anyway, it was really good hanging out with you guys. I missed you so much. Sorry if I was hyper, but I was, I was glad to be back and that got me a little fired up. I want you guys to take care of yourselves and do something that feeds your soul. And I will see you again tomorrow. Love you guys. Take care. Good night.